Hi there, folks. This is Rupert Reed, Dr. Rupert Reed from the University of East Anglia. But I'm speaking to you from my home. You can see in the background there my house with its newly installed solar panels. You can see that I'm outside. It's a cold March day, unseasonably cold. Why is it so cold? Probably because of the jet stream being disrupted, as it so often is now, by climate chaos. Um, really what I wanted to do with this little video was to make it a little bit practical and, and a little bit embedded uh, in the kind of way that I'm embedded here uh, on this land, uh, in this uh, garden. We are lucky enough to have a, a third of an acre here that uh, we have bought and where we are growing uh, food. Let me show you one or two of the things that we are uh, growing. So here, these are called hugel culture beds. I don't know if you can see what's going on. There's um, cardboard covering them to stop animals getting inside them and to keep the moisture in. And so you can see there's some, uh, some turnips growing. And basically what these beds are is they are, among other things, a way of protecting against the ravages of the climate because they absorb so much uh, moisture and keep it there and they have a lot of nutrition in the middle of them. There's a lot of horse manure uh, in the middle of them and old uh, roots and uh, trees and logs. Uh, over here, I'll just show you something else uh, as well, which is, um, these are not ghosts. Uh, these are um, rudimentary protection devices for my young trees in the orchard here, um, which are potentially gonna suffer tonight because it's gonna be very cold tonight. There's gonna be a severe uh, frost. And this is all by way of a little bit of resilience building, a little bit of community climate action. Uh, here you can see the uh, old recycled greenhouse that we have made. And this greenhouse too is taken from somebody else's garden. Neither of them um, cost us anything. Uh, it is crucial that we have ways of protecting ourselves against the way that the weather is being increasingly disrupted because of climate damage. And as some of you will know, this is a key focus of my work now. It, it, I do this at my home as a way of making it real. Uh, and I also talk about it um, extensively under headings such as community climate action, transformative adaptation, and the building of a climate majority here in this country and worldwide. A majority of people who are deeply concerned and activated uh, around the climate and ecological emergency, or as I call it, the more than emergency. It's more than an emergency because it's never going away. Uh, we all know this uh, in our hearts, in our souls. It's gonna define the rest of our lives. And as some of you will know, my emphasis is strongly upon transformative uh, adaptation um, because we have to transform the systems which are failing around us and we have to adapt it's far too late for a focus which is based entirely around mitigation and prevention of massive ecological and climate damage. That damage is here and it is going to get worse. The beautiful thing about adaptation is not only is it a way in which we can take care of ourselves and of each other uh, as we go into this storm, but it is also now, I believe, the supreme way of waking people up of waking people up to the more than emergency. Because so long as you talk about dates like 2035 or 2050 and talk about net zero and mitigation and reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, to most people this feels remote and somehow unreal. But once you start talking about adaptation, once you start doing adaptation, once you start doing the kind of thing that in our small way uh, we're doing here, here's just a view of uh, part of the land that you already saw, uh, earlier. Uh, the sun sets there um, over in the west. Uh, once you do that, then it's unavoidable that it's here, that it's now. We are adapting to it. It is part of our life and it's going to remain part of our life. It is a new permanent condition, a condition of instability that we are entering into. It, there, people ask me sometimes, what's the new normal going to be, Rupert? And my reply is, there is no new normal. The new normal is constant adaptation, constant transformation, constant change. The question before us is, are those adaptations going to be more or less wise and more or less just, 
or are they going to be more or less chaotic? Are those transformations going to be the transformations that are devoutly to be wished, or are they going to be transformations for the worse? Those are the live questions before us. So I hope that this little rooted video gives you a little bit of a sense of why I think the theme of your discussions here is so important and of how all of us can get involved in a practical and obviously not just a theoretical way in seeking to deal with them and resolve them. Although the way that we do it will of course be incredibly different here in a, a temperate but sometimes cold climate uh, in England uh, from how it is in the parts of Africa where many of you watching this uh, are from. Uh, but to come back finally to this theme of a climate majority, what we need to do is find ways in which basically everybody, everybody who is good-hearted and who understands something of what's happening can be involved in what is going on. There already is a climate majority across the world. There already is a majority of people who are deeply concerned about the situation. But most of them are still not deeply concerned enough. Most people are still not fully woken up to the situation. We can wake them up more by engaging in transformative adaptation and community climate action.